So after a positively punishing wait in between episodes, Steven Universe finally returned this week with not one but two brand new episodes kicking off season three. And you know what, I figure because these two episodes are so closely linked and pretty much tell one solid story anyway, I would review both of them simultaneously. The first part was entitled Super Watermelon Island. And hey, you remember all those sentient watermelon Stevens that were given life all the way back in season one? Well, we get to check in on how they're doing over on Mask Island. Turns out in the short amount of time since we left them, they've built one heck of a society. They have self-sustaining agriculture, they have individual personalities, a religion that reveres Steven as some manner of god, and oh yeah, how could I possibly forget ritualistic sacrifices to Malachite? Wow, that is terrifying, and to think I was so close to booking my next vacation to this island even just to get my hands on an adorable watermelon dog. Steven gets wise to what's happening on the island through the use of his astral projection ability, yeah, apparently Steven is just full of surprises, am I right? He can kind of just quantum leap into the bodies of these watermelon guys. The three gems, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, fearing that the rampaging fusion might very well kill them before the cluster threat gets a chance to embark to fight Malachite one-on-one. -on -one. And oh boy, what a knockdown, drag-out fight it is. Remember, this is really the first time we've gotten to see Alexandra use all her powers, where before she was used mostly in a comedic role. This quadruple gem fusion can make use of all the other gems weapon simultaneously. Malachite is no slouch either, especially now that the Jasper personality seems to have pushed out Lapis completely. She's bigger, she's stronger, and she has home field advantage. In fact, the only thing that ends up turning the tide of the battle is that Steven is able to rally the other watermelon people to defend their island. And in the end, it's not even really so much a victory over the rogue fusion as it is our heroes being able to defuse the two Jasper, of course, slinking away to become a threat another day because that's just how these shows work. The much bigger bigger issue is the cluster caused the destruction of the warp pad, which means Steven and Peridot are going to have to embark on their own to the center of the Earth to stop it. This is lampshaded and quite possibly my favorite joke of the two-parter, wherein Steven makes note of the fact that the drill chamber would never have been big enough to fit everybody on the team. And if part one of this two-parter was all about action, then part two, entitled Gem Drill, is all about character development. Peridot has certainly come a long way since joining the team all those episodes back. Now, she truly does see herself as one of the crystal gems now, and it hits her pretty hard too, realizing that her life will never be the same and she can never go home again. Steven even gets some nice and subtle work done with his character in this episode. If you'll remember, this is really the first ever world-threatening problem they're trying to solve. Oh sure, they've had monsters of the week, they've had some serious stuff, but this is, you know, do or die time. It's a lot of pressure to put on a kid, but then again, that's what's endearing about Steven. He's not particularly smart, he's not particularly brave, he just has a really good heart, and when the and gets tough, he just kind of goes with it. This episode also came packing some more information on those creepy gem mutants we've been seeing all over the series. At first, they just seemed like mindless monsters, but as Peridot explains, what they are is actually something far worse. When a gem is shattered, their personality, their very being is tossed to the wind, so they lurch around endlessly trying to find what they lost. It's like being a zombie, but still being cognizant enough to know you're a zombie. Jeez, that is the most hellish interpretation of a living on death I personally could think of. This revelation, as you might have suspected, greatly impacts the way Steven deals with the cluster. Peridot just wants to drill it into pieces and be done with it, but Steven, as we've shown before, he's a lot more sensitive and a lot more susceptible. When the millions of gem shards begin to reach out to him psychically, he takes it upon himself to try and calm them. As we soon discover, the cluster isn't evil, just confused. It's so many fragmented pieces of so many different beings and all it wants to be is to form to get back the one thing that it lost. Steven ends up doing the unthinkable and actually talking to the cluster, reasoning with it, and telling it that there's a much better way, and that would be to bubble itself until the time being when they can put all the pieces back together. And yeah, that's pretty much where the two-parter begins to wind down. The cluster threat has been ended, for now at least. They never say how permanent a solution bubbling is. The gems have Lapis Lazuli back in hand, which you know that's going to create a lot of problems for the future when you stop and remember that she was out of control and a danger to herself and others when cracked, and something of an apathetic turncoat when she was fixed, who will no doubt be dealing with a lot of the fallout from being in such a volatile fusion for too long, and speaking of fusion, Jasper is no doubt still alive and out there somewhere to be a problem later on. All in all, pretty solid two-pack to get us reacquainted with the world of Steven Universe and get us excited.
excited for things that will be happening down the line. If I did have to complain for all the buildup and all the work that went into it, they did kinda deal with the cluster problem rather quickly. But hey, in with the old, out with the new, am I right? Overall, I would feel comfortable giving this one a much deserved 8.5 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you wanna like or subscribe. And if you wanna support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.